Next Curve. Hey everyone, welcome to Next Curve's Rethink webcast and our analyst corner. And today I'm joined by an amazing individual who's become a really good friend in the consulting and analyst world of tech, Chetan Sharma, who is the CEO of Guess Chetan Sharma Consulting. And if you don't know him, you should. He is regarded as one of the biggest, loudest, wisest voices in the industry. And uh, hey, Chet, I want to welcome you. you. You've been on before, and it's really great, great to have you on again. Thanks, Leonard. Uh, thanks for having me again. Yeah. So why don't you take a moment to tell those who don't know you, which should be a really small population of people, who you are and a little bit about uh, Chet and Sharma Consulting. Sure thing. Um, yeah, good to see you again. Um, well, you know, I work in the wireless space. That's kind of the brief uh, background. I've been in the industry for about 30 years, uh, engineer by training, and have been looking at uh, working since the 1G days. Uh, I started off doing RF fingerprinting to detect fraud, uh, believe it or not, using AI systems. <laughs> a lot of the new kids think uh, AI is fairly new, but yeah. it has been around for a really long time. Yeah. Um, we were also doing edge computing at that time in 1995 because we were yeah. doing fraud detection on the cell sites um, within whatever, five milliseconds uh, or whatnot. Uh, but anyway, so fast forward, I've been doing wireless uh, stuff uh, for all that time. And about 22 years ago, I started my consulting firm focused on product strategy and uh, research. Um, and so really looking at what are the trends, where the industry is going, where technology is going, and uh, kind of advising the management teams on what they should do. Yeah. And uh, I mean, all I can attest to is the fact that you've uh, had such a huge impact on the industry. And it's amazing to see the influence that you have, the mind share that you've garnered with uh, some of the leading folks in the industry, right? As well as um, uh, firms uh, and service providers in, in the broad telco ecosystem. So, you know, congratulations. I mean, I think um, it's a testament to your background, your thought leadership. And, uh, it, you know, it, it's it's really cool to have an individual like y you on the show. And uh, I really appreciate you be coming on board here for this webcast and sharing what I think is uh, it, it's, it, it's a pretty amazing summit that you put on every year, right? It's called Mobile Future Forward. And this year, um, you, you had it in September. That was last week. And I wanted to bring you on to share, number one, with our audience what that program is um, and maybe have you provide some of your key takes from this year's session. And hopefully you can draw some interest in getting people like myself uh, to attend next year. You know, um, but, sure. um, you know, obviously, uh, I, I'm, I'm only going to come if you really want me there chatting. <laughs> well, first of all, thank you for uh, all you do for the industry and keeping things, um, putting things in perspective uh, for the space. And, um, you know, in terms of Mobile Future Forward, this is something we started about 14 years ago. Um, and uh, the idea was always to get uh, you know, thought leaders and decision makers to come and brainstorm. So it's more of a brainstorming yeah. summit than it is yeah. a, you know, marketing pitch summit that you typically see in in events. Um, and so we really focus on working with the speakers and their respective organizations to make sure mm -hmm. they're talking only substance and not uh, fluff. Uh, because yeah, you know, the audience is uh, fairly senior as well, and so it's not like they need to. And they detect BS from a distance. Um, and so, you know, you really want to understand how people are thinking, um, where they're going to put their dollars um, and, and really help each other uh, be realistic about the both the opportunities uh, and be optimistic. Yeah. I mean, I'm as optimist as anybody out there. Sure. Um, you have to be a realist as well in terms of yeah. what work needs to get done. Um, and and wait through the hype to to make uh, sense uh, as as these people are trying to figure out their strategy for the next two three five ten years, and so that has been always the goal from the start, and we have stayed true to that mission. 
Yeah. And we are fortunate that uh, we get uh, some senior folks from the ecosystem and and they are willing to talk and and really dis- discuss things in um you know as how they would discuss it in their boardrooms or their uh, internal meetings and so that's the that's the goal and 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 we try to accomplish that uh, every year yeah and I, and i think you're being far too modest uh, i, I it, basically the folks you attend if you look at the roster and some of the media that you do put out there covering the event uh, it, it's basically the who's who right uh as well as the leading operators um vendors and um i i love the guardrails you know so if you go to your your site you see the guardrails for the uh, the event and um i think it's unusual <laughs> but refreshing at the same time but what i think is really amazing is that you've been doing this for 14 years right and um and so uh you know I, I, some of the 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 logos that uh attend and uh support your program or like i mean who are some of the big ones this year that came out i mean they're typically all the 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 big guys getting like you said engaged in really grounded conversations and uh doing practical uh visioning of where the industry is going to go be going but who are some of those that you might you know we get pretty much like, every yeah. main main uh participant in the ecosystem um both on the tech side as well as um the the core wireless wireless side and so we clearly have you know all the cxos from the operators we have senior leaders from the infrastructure community the chipset community uh, the hyperscalers and so we get all the trillion dollar companies um that are out there um but i think more importantly we also get a lot of industry folks um you know the costcos of the world uh, we get neurosurgeons uh, to talk about healthcare and so really practitioners of the trade like people who are in their day to day doing surgeries you know what are they facing you know we can talk about technology all day long but yeah. you really have to look at these neurosurgeons in the healthcare domain to talk mm-hmm. about hey this is there are the problems that i'm facing and and so and and then work backwards to see what solutions or how technology can fill the role in the near term and what needs to get done to fill the role in in medium to long term right so i think by getting that mix a broad mix of people um we are able to have look at the problem across multiple dimensions it's not just say from a vendor point of view or connectivity point of view mm-hmm. or a chipset point of view really it's if you have everybody in the value chain participating in the same discussion they will look at the lens very differently uh, right. they might yeah. be trying to solve the same problem but as how they approach it uh, or their what their requirements are uh will you know hopefully uh other people are learning from that too right they are learning right, that right. oh maybe my assumptions about x y and z are not really up to the snuff and maybe i need to recalibrate uh what i need to do and so i think that's the whole motivation uh, around how we design and and put together the event and you've been doing this for 14 years that's amazing Yeah it's so hard yeah. to believe uh, we don't <laughs> it has gone on for <laughs> for quite quite long time right and it takes place in in Seattle right in the yes, Seattle area in Seattle, yeah. right mm-hmm. right right and so hey can you share with us what were some of the big themes this year at uh uh at um you know mobile future forward and you're going to have to you know explain quantum verse sure. pixels to is it pixels for disruption right pixels of disruption yeah i mean that that's a very dramatic tagline there for for 2023 so you're going to have to explain that but what what was the agenda what what were you guys discussing this at this year's summit sure uh, so maybe let's start with the definition of quantum verse and how we think about quantum verse um so you know the basic thesis we have had for a number of years is that um when you get a new technologies into the ecosystem uh disruption happens and disruption happens because of the intersection and interaction of these technologies um and so having studied the past few cycles um it was quite clear from say the most immediate cycle that um we are at the tail end of which was the cloud and Uh, LTE and yeah. the smartphones um that each cycle kind of puts pulls each other up like uh 
LTE helped the smartphones, smartphones helped the cloud, and, and vice versa amongst uh, all. Right, the, right, uh, yeah. And so that's like three big variables into the ecosystem that entered. Uh, the previous cycle before that was about computers and internet. And so internet pull computers, computers pull internet, and that synchronous, uh, synchronous uh, growth of these trends is what really creates the disruption. That's our basic thesis. And so if we look at what's going on currently, and it, ha it has been in motion for a few years, you you get edge computing, you have 5G, right. you have AI. Uh, obviously, there are different flavors of AI. Uh, you have blockchain, you have robotics, you have quantum computing, and so on and so forth. So many more variables than we have had in the past cycle. And so if the thesis holds true for the next 5, 10, 20 years, then we are likely to see even bigger disruptions. And so it is likely to lead to uh, mm -hmm. quantum leaps, like big disruptive yeah. changes. Mm -hmm. And quantum verse comes from that notion that quantum verse is the study of the universe of quantum leaps. Uh, and ah. so really un un trying to understand where and trying to gauge okay. where the puck is going to go in terms of disruption yeah. and disruptive yeah. forces that are unleashing um, and have been in mo these things have been in motion for a period of time. And as these things mature, uh, by geography, by technology, by company, you likely to see the sparks um, or new companies emerge. And these new companies or new new um, uh, disruptions are the pixels of disruption in the canvas of quantum verse. Yeah, well, you know what? I'll have to admit, I have to admit this, Chetan, that I do like it a lot better than metaverse. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, no, that's fantastic. So um, maybe if you could uh, give us a sense of sure. uh, the pressing themes, because you you've you've outlined a wide range of technology trends that um, we're all dealing and grappling with today. Mm -hmm. You talked about the um you know kind of blueprinting and looking forward and seeing uh, you know where some of these technologies are converging to have a impact but uh, you know taking a step back we're facing faced with a lot of challenges um in, in the world and in the tech world itself and so what are some of these uh pressing themes and uh topics that you guys talked about at uh, at uh, mobile um mobile future forward um, so there were a few, few things that we concentrated on. One was a 5G monetization, um, what is working and what's not, and, and why, and, and where hmm. is it working. Um, the other theme was around uh, applied AI, not just the kind of generative AI, but how do you apply the various flavors of AI in specific settings, uh, both in the enterprise, uh, but also in uh, mobile networks or networks in general. Uh, as well as in operations. Um, and what do you really get out of it? Like, what's the tangible benefit? Is it incremental 1% to 2% shaving? Or is it really radical and you get 20 to 50% uh, change in, in what you do? And so there was a lot of emphasis on really understanding what people are doing and how what they are seeing. Uh, and also shortcomings, like what, you know, generative AI is, is great, but what else you have to do to get to the point where you can take advantage of generative AI. Right, so that right. That was uh, one uh, big focus areas. Um, the other areas we kind of delved into uh, were healthcare. Uh, clearly, you know, irrespective of generative AI, there are other technologies that are coming in that can transform healthcare. And so we right. had some real practitioners uh, of the trade um, um, to talk about what they are seeing, both from the product side, like Medtronic, um, the biggest uh, yeah. medical instrumentation company, uh, yeah. how they are implementing these new technologies into their product set so that they uh, come into the marketplace. And then we had neurosurgeons and physicians and uh, people from academia mm. who are looking at that uh, and saying, well, maybe this will work better or that will work better. Uh, and how do you really internalize that into an industry that's generally resistant to change? Um, and generally, there are people who want to push forth uh, both on technology front, but more importantly, on the policy front to, so that systems can and processes can change. As you know, healthcare is very difficult to change, at least in the U.S. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
and and then we went into cybersecurity. You, you know, clearly, um, you know, these technologies are great, but they're also great for uh, the bad guys. And so, yeah. what people are seeing in terms of new new types of attacks, new type of threats, uh, and how do you guard against them? And so, yeah. we had people who are working on the tools, working on in the field uh, in terms of you know CISOs who are um, on the on the receiving side of these threats, uh, we had people from uh, the Department of Homeland Security talking about what they are seeing, and so on and so forth. So it was a deep dive into um, uh, cybersecurity. We had discussions around, believe it or not, metaverse, but more industrial metaverse. Like what is happening on the industrial side of the metaverse, and how are companies thinking about and thinking through um, the applications um, that yeah. they are deploying in. Yeah, you know, by the way, you can say metaverse, it's okay, you know, and I have to give a shout out to Vishal and Misha, you know, um, yeah, they're, they're big, they're big metaverse guys and, you know, props to them. No, for I mean, they are doing good work, right? I mean, they're oh, yeah, trying, yeah, yeah. They are yeah. trying to f figure out and, and solve the real problems uh, than just... Um, yeah. No, they're both they're both fantastic. So shout to, shout out to both of you guys. And Misha is with Ericsson, and uh, Vishal is uh, with Lenovo, and so they're both doing some really uh, pioneering things, actually, in, in the XR space, as I like to call it, or um, as Qualcomm calls it, spatial computing. It's mm -hmm. not Apple, okay? Yeah, Qualcomm did it first. So <laughs> anyway, <laughs> and. Um... Um, what else? Then, yeah, then we had uh, discussions around, um, you know, like I kind of alluded to earlier, uh, AI in, in wireless has been around since before uh, yeah. 1G. Uh, and, and people have been using different techniques to apply uh, AI to different sets of problems in the network. Right. Yeah. Uh, in the last two, three years, uh, you know, there have been a lot of companies um, that I've worked with directly and, uh, companies in general that are really taking a look at this deluge of data uh, that comes right. uh, in the network and how do you process it in a way that can yeah. be beneficial to the network, to the consumer, to the operations. And so we really focused on how do you take the new, both old and new AI uh, uh, to really uh, look at operations uh, yeah. and then and the networks and to see what you can do with network congestion what you can do with yeah. uh, fault uh, management uh, redundancy and so on and so forth uh, so that it has a tangible and measurable impact on yeah. on operations of networks um, yeah. we had a discussion really substantive discussion around sustainability yeah uh, th there is a lot of greenwashing that goes on in the industry yes. uh, but we wanted to focus on um uh, you know, what does it really take to make sustainability economically viable? Uh, because mm -hmm. in a capitalist society, uh, economics speaks better than uh, principles in general. And so you have to, uh, I mean, it's no news to anybody that global warming is having a, just, a, just a massive impact on societies. Um, mm -hmm. You know, heat index has been going through the roof everywhere in the world. Uh, and if we are not uh, serious about it or do something tangible fairly, fairly soon, uh, you, you know, our kids will have to live with the consequences. And so uh, we had, you know, we wanted to discuss, well, what can you actually do? Because, you know, the tech industry can be the leader in the space um, and the tools that we are building can be deployed by others and we can be the guide to rest of the ecosystem to really take advantage of the tools and but we have to be honest with ourselves too right it's not just uh buying credits that does that does the job you really have to fundamentally change how you develop products and services um and maybe even reshape uh consumerism like uh, you don't have yeah. to buy buy it every six months or every year uh, the same product and so how do you you know change the dynamic around how we consume electronics uh, and so on and so forth, and, and obviously the network side of things. I mean, the, the war in, in in Ukraine really highlighted the energy crisis in in Europe. Uh, right, prices doubled, tripled, uh, quadrupled. And so, how do you change uh, use technology to reshape energy? Yeah. And and that yeah. was um, part of the discussion as well. 
Hmm. And so there, as you can see, there were kind of wide variety of um, yeah. topics, all interlinked uh, in one way or another, um, hmm. but tied by the thread of uh, the synchronicity of uh, uh, the trends, like the synchronous curves are mm -hmm. what really creates disruption and mm -hmm. we wanted to study them and and then look mm -hmm. at the evidence of what's working and what's not and right. what's real and what's not yeah so what were some of the big takes uh conclusions i, I mean it, it, it looks like you guys hit on all kinds of topics all of them very germane and essential for discussion in these times and, and in the state of the industry as well as the state of the world but what what are some of those key takes from these discussions? Because I, I, you know, I suspect that you've there was some cross domain contemplation going on, right? Um, mm -hmm. and, and especially given the audience and the topics that you have. But what were some of those things that just really popped from the the summit this year? Um, so you know, one of the things that I also wanted to emphasize was. Um, uh, really understanding the narratives that form in the industry. And one of my pet peeves is that um, a lot of people come to the conclusion very quickly with incomplete information, uh, or they're not patient mm -hmm. enough to really think it through. And and, mm -hmm. and so these, uh, you know, half-cooked uh, narratives form, and if they're not challenged, they take hold. Uh, and they yeah. take hold, and then uh, it's very hard to fight, uh, fight back, uh, or change it, change it to what the truth might be. And there can be different versions of truth. Uh, but uh, why I proposed, what I proposed was that we should really take our time to really understand and, and understand the trends, and not just look at one dimensionality of what we are observing, but rather than take a three sixty view of what's happening. And mm -hmm. so on that. Uh, you know, we discussed a lot of what's happening with 5G around the world. And so if you just look at one operator or one country, you will get an incomplete picture. Um, right. yeah. You know, in the US, as you know, the revenues were declining when five before 5G, and they did go back up, right? They have been mm -hmm. going up uh, ever since uh, 5G was launched. And so there's a direct correlation and attribution to 5G that um mm. the industry revenues uh, kind of went back and you might not know or uh, you might not uh, realize that unless you dug deeper into the numbers right, uh, right, right and uh and so this notion of that 5g has been a failure or it hasn't done as well uh is, is clearly incorrect um but at the same time there was clearly a lot of hype around uh 5g in terms right. of 5g can solve world hunger and every problem under the face of the earth uh, and and that is not true either, and and so we wanted to provide a dose of reality of actually what's happening. So, five G is doing well in terms of deployment, fastest cycle ever. Uh, handsets have been there um, since day one, which is unusual for a cycle like um, in in, mm -hmm. in wireless. Um, the consumer side is doing really well in the U.S. Uh, yeah. It's doing it's doing good in in say China and in Korea, uh, somewhat in Japan. Europe is, is fairly um, early uh, in, in the game, yeah. and so it's behind. Uh, but on the industrial side, um, uh, there is a lot happening in China that is not happening anywhere else in the world. Um, and so, you know, the notion of uh, how U.S. took over the industrial side with the LTE cycle, uh, that center of gravity has shifted um, for the time being uh, to China. Um, right. And then... Um, there was a lot of discussion around AI, like what is AI yeah. really good for and how do you use it? And is it yeah. useful in every scenario? Uh, right. And, and you know, clearly generative AI is really good for uh, doing things like trying to find answers uh, using your data sets, uh, your own data sets. Uh, but then before you do that, you have to clean the data. Um, so it's no different than what happened with yeah. uh, previous generations of AI. Uh, you have to have the right data sets to be able to train on and be uh, be you know cognizant of the biases, uh, mm -hmm. the the pollution in the data, and so on and so forth. And, and then gradually you get uh, you know really take advantage of the power of the generative AI. Yeah. And so you can apply that not only for knowledge building within the corporation, like AT and T is doing. Yeah. Um, uh, or you can apply it for uh, customer services. Yeah. Um, like T-Mobile is doing with Google and others. Right. Uh, and so uh, 
And then all the network side, you know, Ericsson is doing, uh, Nokia is doing, and other right. startups, uh, IRA Technologies and others are doing, uh, Openga Networks and so on and so forth. So they are really focused on how do you take this uh, just uh, terabytes of stream of data yeah. and use AI to uh, really understand it and focus on the bits that really matter. Yeah. Um, so, f- for example, you're doing congestion management um, mm. when things just go um uh, really high up because of, of a yeah. game or, or a concert or whatever. How are yeah. you going to manage all of that? Right. Um, and so there was uh, a, quite a bit of discussion around that, both from the operators as well as vendors as well as startups um, in the ecosystem. Um, I wish I was there. <laughs> <laughs> You're tempting me to show up on, uh, on in um, for the tw- uh, 24 event. <laughs> No, I mean, I, I think those are great points that you're making. And, uh, you know, I'm sure that in 2024, you're going to have the same discussion as uh, there's some digestion of um, what uh, some of the realities, right, of uh, generative AI, this new generation of um, uh, of AI that everyone's getting excited about, even though it's not really new. Mm-hmm. per se. But um, I, I love the point that you're making here. This is, I mean, you were doing AI back in the day, right? Uh, AI has been around for a long time. Uh, and I, I, I think it, it's, um, you know, I, it's really great to hear that you guys really talked about what it takes to implement valuable solutions, applications using AI. And I, one of the big problems we have today is people are generalizing mm-hmm. AI as yeah. being some kind of uber all-powerful concept that solves all problems and will supplant conventional computing models. And that, I think that's absolutely untrue and mm-hmm. actually is quite dangerous thinking. Yeah. Um, I, I, and I, I, um, I can appreciate uh, the kind of dialogues that you foster a- at your summit there, Chetan. Uh, and I hope you continue to do that because I really think that it's important for uh, folks like us who are in the position that we are having a voice in the industry to uh, to inject that sensibility that you've been doing for 14 years, <laughs> you know, with uh, Mobile Future Forward. So it's pretty amazing. Um, and I commend you for that effort and, and that you haven't just been doing it, um, you know, uh, yesterday or the day before you've been doing it. You've had this commitment to this mission for quite some time. So uh, and thank you. Hats off to you. And I'm glad I know you. I'm glad that we're buddies. You know, (laughs) so, um, but no, this has been really great. By the way, are you going to be at Mobile World Congress, Las Vegas? You will be. Uh, I'm not sure yet. (laughs) I might decide last minute. Okay. All right. Well, if you do show up, make sure that you reach out to me because I'll be there and we should, we should have a coffee or get a drink or something like that. Right. Yeah. So uh, anyways, um, Chetan, thank you so much for joining me on this Rethink podcast. And, you know, it's great hanging out with you and having you share about Mobile Future Forward 2023. Quantumverse, people, Quantumverse, the pixels of destruction. I mean, not destruction, disruption. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, you're not for destruction. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, not for destruction. If you do it wrong. Yeah. Okay, if you do it wrong, it's destruct- destruction. But Chetan is all about positive disruption, the stuff that actually creates new value, right? Yeah. Uh, right? Yes, right? absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I know you. I know you. So um, why don't you take a moment to uh, tell our audience how they can get in touch with you, find out more about your research or consulting, as well as, you know, find out about uh, uh, Mobile Future Forward 2024, because, you know, we want to pack the venue, right? It's going to be it's going to be a big one next year, right? Yeah. Thank you, Leonard. Um, and well, it's uh, fairly easy to find me on either LinkedIn or um, chetansharma.com uh, in terms of what we do and um, and what we can do for companies in the ecosystem. Um, and thanks for uh, doing these podcasts. It's amazing. I don't know how you do them, but uh, hats off to you. It's easy. <laughs> I, I, I press I record. Uh, I Get great uh, people like you. <laughs> 
Yeah, well, uh, I'm sure that we're going to bump into each other in person uh, very soon. I mean, this is this is like crazy season for us, right? So, yeah. yeah. But hey, um, thank you once again, Chet, and really appreciate it. And I'm glad that, um, you know, uh, Mobile Future 4 was so successful this year. And uh, hopefully folks reach out to you and find out. And you're able to share some of the, uh, you know, the other great takeaways and outcomes of that summit um for the betterment of the industry um and uh, you know who knows even humanity let's, let's go that far yeah. so um but anyways thanks again chatting and uh, thanks for everyone for tuning in and please subscribe to the next curve youtube channel you know just to hit that subscribe button and like share the easiest thing to do is uh also follow us and subscribe to our research portal uh and there's a media center at www.next-curve.com uh, it's a great one-stop shop for all next curve research content media and you will be notified when we publish new articles and content just like this podcast here today so until next time you know keep it real follow chetan and chetan sharma uh, consulting and uh hopefully he'll see you at mobile future forward 2024 chetan thank you so much thank you